Shabbat Shalom. We are arriving to Balak. This is a parasha that has the name of a foreigner or a Gentile. He is the king of the Moabites. Let me tell you, if you go to the traditions of our people in our, sa our sages, all them, that we talk about this area of Bilam and, and Balak, you, you will be surprised. For example, one of the, the ideas is that uh, uh, Balak really was the, was the king of Midian and took over uh, Moab. And there's the reason that Moab and the Midianites, they got together. No. Uh, another thing that is interesting to see about this background is about Bilan. Bilan has a very interesting uh, a tradition coming from us, is that Bilan was the grandson of Laban, okay? Uh, Beor was the son of Laban. And, and, and Beor produced or had Bilan. Wow. That was, then everything is in the family. Remember that Bilan came from the same place that Abraham Abinu came. Now, there are certain relationships between Bilan and Abraham Abinu. One of those, it is those who you bless will be blessed, and those who you curse will be cursed. That's, uh, that's exactly what Abraham Avinu was giving to, by the Creator, blessed be his name, to, uh, uh, when the, to the people of the world about Israel. Here there is something that I want to, uh, I always say to you that this time, I am not trying to do too much history or too much, I, I, I want to understand what is the message for us today. Because to me, this is the most important thing. You know, many times we can read uh, in the Talmud, we can read in our Midrashim, many of the stories that are talk about these uh, char characters that we see here in the Torah. But the question here is, what these truths are coming to teach us? What, the, uh, what this narrative we can get? For example, in, in this, you have belong who is considered a prophet of the, the creator, and he's a Gentile. You know, uh, one of the things that our sages say, that God gave it to the Gentiles a prophet. In that way, they couldn't say, you know, it's not fair. You have given all the prophets to, the, to, the, to, the, to Israel and no one to the Gentiles when he gave it belong. But what a good prophet was belong. No. Secondly, uh, we, we can see here about the, the relationship between relatives. You know, Moab, Midian, all of them are related with Israel. You know, when Israel was coming before he took uh, Sihon, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Amorites, uh, uh, it, all of them are they are related to each other. Descendants of Edom, descendants of, you know, everything is in the family. We want it or not, a long, long distance, but there is a relationship. It, what is telling us? To me, the, the, the meaning here is that the universality of humanity, that all of us, we are related, we want it or not. You know, one time when I was uh, teaching about in Bereshit, in Genesis chapter 10, about the descendants of Noah. You know, I told everybody, you know, all of us, we want it or not, we are related. Because we come from Noah, and Noah comes from, uh, he has three uh, sons, and from the three sons, we come from one of them. You know, and then I say, I can tell you, all of you, you are my relatives, and some of you will say, oh no, he's coming to my home. No, uh, uh, and some, some people do, do, no, do not like to have me as a relative, you know? <laughs> but uh, we are all related. This is also good to see about in, in, this, in this portion. Because 
is the way that we treat each other and the way that we see each other. You know, Moab, they, they didn't need to worry about uh, Israel. The reason that Israel attacked the Amorites was because they didn't allow them to pass through and they faced them. And then Og, the other king, uh, also faced uh, Israel and they were defeated. If Moab will allow them to pass, nothing will happen. But uh, what does it say? They are coming through and they use the term that they are going to leak the land and leave it empty. And today, I would like that now we come to the time that we are living now. Because they mention in this portion about the, the people who left Egypt. And they left because of a great uh, action of the creator, you know? And uh, they has certain power, if we can say, or the words, so then as very powerful. In those times, their gods, will, are, they were regional gods. In other words, their gods, they won't cross borders. You know, my God cannot cross your border and your God cannot cross my border. But uh, this God, was crossing every border, and he was not respecting anything, then this is my border, or this is my place. No, Israel keep going. Then that created a fear. And this, and this fear was produced by the rumors and the things that they were say, seeing, but uh, they didn't took in consideration that Israel was not trying to conquer them only to pass through. Let's go now to today, and let's see the situation that we are going right now. Because this parasha ends in a very sad way. And the next parasha, the next portion, is Pinchas. And we are going to see a little bit more about this character. I only need to tell you that according to our ancestors, uh, uh, according to our sages, according to our rabbis, Pinchas was not a Jew. <gasps> what am I saying? Pinchas was not a Jew, and he was a priest. Why? Because his mother was a Canaanite. Okay? You can see it in the book of Shemo and the book of Exodus in chapter 6. They, say, they tell you, you know, Eliezer got a, a wife from a, uh, one of the uh, outside tribes that was no a, a Israelite. And, and this also, I am mentioning these little details because there are many things that we have accepted by our sages. And that could be beautiful stories but they are not Torah. And, uh, and because of that, we have come to a point today that we can believe whatever we want to. And we accept whatever we, we want to accept. And what is convenient to me, I take it. What is not convenient to me, I, I discard it. And we take everything out of context. I have seen attacks about persons that speak about morality and about righteousness, and, and they are attacked by those people who supposedly they are defending uh, the equality of everybody. You know, because we don't want to see what is right, and we do not want to acknowledge that we are wrong, because we are always right. Because it is uh, my love what uh, only counts. <coughs> no? And if you call somebody a name, or you say to somebody something that is because they are doing something wrong, the one that's wrong is you. How you dare? How you dare to tell that person who is in open sin, in open a, 
uh, what we call it, immorality? How can you say that they are wrong? You don't have enough heart? You are not have enough love? Then, to love someone is to accept the morality. And we have a right to that point. And you're going to see, uh, this is the reason that the, the ending of this parasha and the beginning of the other, you're going to see about what immorality can create to a nation, to the point of destruction. Israel, I want to tell you this, Israel cannot be destroyed by any human nation. Our creator, blessed be his name, the Arboreolan, he can allow Israel to be punished. And we have seen many times that happening. But Israel still exists. Have you asked about the Jebusites? The, the, the Hittites and the Hittites and the, all the Hittites that exist in the world disappear. But Israel is still alive. Because Israel cannot be destroyed by human beings. And the Creator is the only one that allows a punishment to Israel. Here, the, the story of Balak and Bilan is about to create a situation in which sorcery will take over and will stop this covering of the Creator without then realizing that there is only one Creator, there is only one God, and He is universal and is for everyone for all the nations, because he created us. But I belong, being such a special person, that in, in certain ways he was especially giving a, a gift of prophecy, Nebuah. And he misused it for his own benefit. You know, we have something similar. Later on, we, uh, 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 the, the prophet Elisha and his um, and servant, you know, how he wanted to profit from, uh, from getting, doing something good. When the Creator gives you something, it's not for profit, it's for serving. And Bilan wanted to do a prophet. And he tried by all means to go. And until to the end, even that he was not able, listen carefully, if he was not able to curse Israel, he gave to the Moabites and Midianites a solution for Israel to be defeated by the Creator, not by them. They told them to do what? Acts of immorality. Look at, I, I want to bring you for today. Because I want that you transfer those values today. Israel right now is surrendered by enemies all over. Israel doesn't have friends, doesn't have friends around them, doesn't have friends in Europe, doesn't have friends in Asia, doesn't have friends in South America, doesn't have friends anywhere. Everybody hates Israel. But the worst people in Israel are the Israelites who hate Israel. And here is where I want to come. But Bilan and Balak, with all the treats and all the things, the only thing that Bilan was able, and you read very carefully, chapter 23 and 24, all the blessings that Bilan pronounced in favor of Israel, to the point that today, in this morning, in our Sidur, what do we say? 
מה תאבו אוכליך. We, we sing it and we do. That is given by belong. But who gave it those words? Because the Creator said, whatever I say to you, you repeat it. But batum. Now, let me put it in this, in this way. Israel is the covering and the protector. Uh, the Creator is the covering and the protector of Israel. Israel needs to do only one thing, to follow the Creator. He gave us the Ten Commandments. He gave us what was right and what was wrong, to follow. Our, our job to be the chosen people was not to be the top, to be the best, or to be the greatest. To us was not the idea to be the conquerors or to take land for taking land. The land was already given, adjudicated to us from the beginning to our father, Abraham. I mean, we were not taking anybody's land. That was already the land that the God, the Creator, had given to Israel. They were not going to dispossess anybody, only to tell them, please move, you are in my house. That's all. No dispossess, move. But they didn't want to move. And they need to be taken out. Today we are in the same situation. You, you know, I just heard that one lady say no long ago uh, to try to gain the favor of, the, of Christianity that Jesus Christ, for us, Yeshua, the rabbi, the, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, say, was a Palestinian. He's not any longer a Jew. He's not Israel. He's a Palestinian. You know? The, the worst part it is that at the time of Yeshua, only for simple history, simple history, the place where he lived is, was called Israel. And that was the Romans in the year 136, when they defeated Bar Kofba or Bar Kosiva, they, they anointed Messiah by uh, a dear Rabbi Akiba. When he was defeated, they destroyed Jerusalem, they destroyed the temple, and not only that, but they changed the name. They call it Palestinia, and they call it the capital Jerusalem, Aeolia Capitolina, Victoria. And this is after Yeshua. Then even there, they are not even historically correct. But uh, the lies are the lies. And now it's very popular, this idea about fake news. You know, that's what I'm putting all over. Then how we can apply this message for today? Here there is a great warning, not to the other nations, the great warning is to Israel. I wish that Israel hear and listen and see. When at the end, Bilan couldn't destroy, couldn't curse Israel, gave an idea to the Moabites and Midianites. Bring them to immorality. And you're going to see that their God, like it was not his own God, is going to abandon them. And then they are going to be weak and they can be defeated. And it's a man called Pinchas, son of Eliezer, the Hagadol Kohen, who jump and make it right. And you know what? To make it right, he needed to destroy the immorality. Today, we cannot talk about it in that way because we are going to be fundamentally so, or sadistic. I mean, you know, I, I, I am not talking about that, but I am talking about 
that we can learn from the lessons of the past in order not to repeat it again. But we keep repeating. Now Israel is almost like uh, those, uh, uh, what do you call those uh, big uh, birds that open their, the peacock. a peacock, you know? Like a peacock showing. We are the only nation in the middle is that we are very, very uh, open-minded, very uh, uh, free of anything. Because today, the idea of being free means being immoral. This is the idea. Being open-minded, be progressive. The, uh, uh, how many people they call themselves, they love to say, I am progressive. You know, being progressive is to accept all kinds of immoralities. That's being progressive, and that's okay. Now, more and more, society is taking the right of the parents with their children. That we call it the patria potestad. The, 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 the character of the parents to have the right over their children has been lost. Or now it's the state who order what the children can do or cannot do. We are more and more being persecuted because we believe in a higher power. And more and more, we are becoming a, minor a persecuted minority. And they, they call us bigots, fundamentalists, or retrog. You know that we are uh, backwards. Why? Because we talk about the truth. Bilan couldn't destroy Israel by curses, but he was able to hurt Israel by immorality. And today, we are going exactly to the same road. And I'm going to tell you, I am not a religious person. Even the people don't, don't believe me, but I am not religious. You know, I don't believe that Judaism, Biblical Judaism, is a religion. Biblical Judaism is a way of living. Having uh, Biblical Judaism has nothing to do with religion, has to do with a relationship with the Creator. And that's where we are. You know, if you have a father and a mother, and your parents they give you to you good instructions, and you disobey those instructions, and then you get in trouble, are you going to blame your parents because you did it? This is the way that we are acting today. Because today, we are not taking responsibility of our own acts. We are blaming society, we are blaming the world, we are blaming the rich people, we are blaming the government. We blame everybody. But we do not take in consideration that we are responsible as individuals. I need to stop blaming others for my own actions. And when Pinhas, at the end of this of this parasha, when he saw the immorality of uh, Simri and Cosby, a, 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 a principal among the Shimonites, the tribe of Shimeon, and Cosby, a Midianite woman, and doing acts of immorality in front of the tabernacle, in front of the Ohel Moed, they were laughing about the Creator. And he was a prince in Israel, in a sea. And the only thing that he could do was to stop 
the immorality. And there were 24,000 that died because of that. They were worshiping a god, the god of Baal Peor. You know who the Baal Peor means and, and signify? Is the is the god of today? Is the is is, is the god of immorality? Is is the god of sexuality? Is the god of doing things wrong? That is the worship of Baal Peor. We are being consumed and we are being forced by the world to accept their ways when we know that that's wrong. What we can do? And this is why we are becoming smaller and smaller. Because most of the people, they say, I give up. Sure. I accept whatever they say. You know, have you, lately, have you gone and watched any movie, any series of movie or anything like that? What did you see in those movies now? Everything is projecting a point of view that is not true, but it's everywhere now. And everybody needs to accept it. And is you there, is you there to complain or to give an opinion opposed to the situation? You are a bigot. You are the one that's wrong. You know, with the Jewish people, we have been called to be or legoyim. But now, Instead to be all, what are we are? Shahor. We are darkness. Pure, pure darkness. We are the people that we have been called to be a blessing to other nations. Are we now a blessing to other nations? Compromising our values? Because we want to be accepted by the other nations. That's what happened when Bilang tells Balak, bring your women, the Midianites, to worship, and they, the men of Israel, they will bow, bow and worship the God of Baal Peor. I offer you something that entice you. You don't need to worry any longer about what is right and wrong. And this is what is happening today. Then why I say to you, this is a warning to Israel. Because like I said at the beginning, Israel cannot be destroyed by other nations. But Israel can be destroyed by themselves. And one of the signals in Israel right now is the disunity that there is there. You know, Israel, that little bitty country, politically speaking, has more political parties than any other nation in the world. United States, that is the greatest nation in the world, has only two parties. And they, they had like a 60 different parties. Because, you know, like a, in, the, in this story telling about the, the, the birthing of Israel, you know, uh, comes a Richard Nixon to tell when he was elected president to say, I think it was at that time Golda Meir was the prime minister. And he called Golda Mayer and say to Golda, uh, I am the president of the greatest nation in the world, the largest and more powerful nation in the world, and I am here to counsel you and to help you to govern your, your nation. 
And Golda Meir said, thank you, Mr. President Richard Nixon. I am so glad that you are so kind. The problem is that you have one president in the United States. Here in Israel, we have six million prime ministers. That's who we are. Then, what is the, the thing that we can bring together? Please do not get discouraged. Because it's very easy to fall discouraged. Many of us we have been asking this question. I myself, as you rabbi, have been asking my question. Maybe it's better that I keep my mouth shut and don't say anything, and I allow everything to happen. It's better for me to forget and, you know, go to my, to, to my home and to sleep my, uh, and, and do nothing. Maybe it's time to take me a vacation. But you know what? The Creator wants us active. He's giving us a message, and it's a message of truth and love. We need to care for those ones who are in need. Yes, we need to care for those ones, for the widows, for the orphans, for the girl, for, for the uh, immigrant, for those ones, for the poor, for those ones who don't, don't have any. That is true Judaism. But true Judaism is not to be totally lost in immorality and in deceit. That is going to destroy us. Let's pray together. Like a, the, the, when we read Matobu Ojaleja, Yalko Mishkanoteja. How wonderful are your tents, O Jacob? You know, and that was given by Bilan because he was forced to bless Israel. We do not need to be forced to bless Israel, totally the contrary. We need to pray for Israel, and you know why? Because if Israel is in the care, the world is in the care. And this is not a selfish prayer only for Israel, because when we pray for Israel, we are praying for the peace of the world. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>